Welcome to Dragon's Lair Update. This month, Region 20 Lacrosse gets underway, Coach Henlon talks track and field, and Coach Carey's Dragons get ready for the playoffs. We'll start with men's lacrosse. Howard takes on arch rival CCBC Essex. Mark Zinno anchors our coverage. Thanks, Diane. Lacrosse analyst Chris Carey here to help set the stage. The Dragons are five days removed from a devastating trip to Hartford. Howard trailed by four goals with six minutes left when an altercation occurred, inciting several coaches and players to step onto the field. The game was ended early. 14 Howard players were suspended. Three coaches also suspended. And oh, by the way, six-time defending Region 20 champ Essex is in town. Chris, Howard's going to dress 16 players. How can the Dragons beat Essex? It's always tough when you can't field your whole team. Howard is going to have to play very smart and hold on to the ball to keep the game from turning into a foot race, which Essex will probably look to make the game. CCBC Essex enters the game ranked second in the nation. Knights are 7-1. and one. They've won 10 straight against Howard dating back to 2008. Over the last five years, Essex is undefeated against all of Region 20. Essex is averaging 16 goals per game. Chris, what can we expect from the Knights' high-powered offense? The Knights are going to try and run a high-tempo offense. They're going to want to get the ball to either Marcus Dietz or Cameron Stone, Essex's two leading point scorers. Howard and Essex face off next. Let's go to the Dragons' lair. First half, here's Matt Gray operating from behind, gets to the crease, hammered by long pole Andrew Cormode. Brock Went gets the ball. Goes to Cody Martin on the run. Jump shot, he scores! This is a great job of sticking with the play to find the open man for the goal. The defense does a great job sliding into the attackment to double team the ball and get the strip. Zach McElroy yard sails him. What a play from Howard's long stick midfielder. Essex gets it to Marcus Dietz. Three step release. Matt Hood breaks it up. Dylan Bruce gets the ground ball and finishes up high. Essex on the board. Heads up play from the freshman out of Bellingham, Washington. Taji Mobley attacks the short stick. Spin move. Mobley with a jump shot. He's turned away by Andrew Cilio. Here's Marcus Dietz. Essex is trying to clear space so that Marcus Dietz can get the room he needs to score the goal. It works. Dietz puts it away. Terrific effort from the sophomore out of St. Francis de Sales High School in Columbus, Ohio. Howard just turned it over, and here come the Knights. Javon Speller dodges, back to Parker Jones. Essex is taking advantage of the unsettled situation by moving the ball fast to find the man for the open goal. Jake Brown to Ben Linkus. Dodges, stops on a dime. Linkus, high to low, denied by Cilio. The Knights' extra man offense takes the field. Essex moves it up top, over to Bruce. Dietz is open on the doorstep. Essex closes the first quarter with five unanswered. Down four goals and missing 14 players, Howard needs a play. Dragons go to Dan Kaplan. He gets to the crease, absorbs the push, and he scores! Tough goal from the Howard High School grad. Third quarter, after 30 minutes of lacrosse with only 16 players, Howard continues to fight. Ben Linka scores the man up tally. Essex moves the ball quickly and Howard's second slide was late. Dietz operating from behind the cage, goes to Joel Linkus, he fires. Off the shin of Hood. The ball's in the air. Bruce gets it and finds the back of the net. 16-4 Essex. Fourth quarter, here's Dietz. Moves it to Brown. Connects with Stone right on the crease and he scores. Unfortunately, the shorthanded Howard couldn't handle the high-powered offense of Essex. The Knights win big. Let's send it down to Matt Stovall. All right, Tom, what did Coach Fowles say to you and the team after this game? Just said, you know, great job. I mean, that's really all that can be said to a group of 16 guys who yesterday found out that we would be a group of 16. So really positivity is the only thing that, that we can address at this point. I mean, there are things that we will bring to practice from the film that we'll hope to fix from this because there's always an opportunity to get better. But for the 16 guys that are out here today, I don't have any doubt that every single one of us put all that we could into the game and played the roles that we tried to play. And so to, to be negative in any sense is not counterproductive. So very positive and just congratulating us for, for committing to the program and, and doing what we had to do. All right, Dan, so you're only going to have 16 for the next game also. What's your mindset going into the Catonsville game? Well, going into Catonsville, you know, we're going to have to prepare really well. We, we now know exactly who we're going to have and how we're going to have those people and what we're going to be able to do. So we got to prepare for the next one. we got to move on from what just happened and get those 16 guys that we're going to have ready and get them as most prepared as possible. 
Howard gets three players back for a crucial Region 20 matchup against CCBC Catonsville. Eleven Dragons are still suspended. Howard's record stands at one and two in the region. A loss to Catonsville would likely result in a first round matchup at Essex or Anne Arundel in the region tournament. Chris, how does Howard get past Catonsville? Howard needs to keep possession of the ball out of Catonsville's high-powered offense. The Cardinals have six players in their team with double-digit goals this season. If Howard doesn't keep possession, this game could turn ugly. CCBC Catonsville enters the game ranked 10th in the nation. Cardinals are 7-4 and four, thanks in part to a strong defense. Only three schools have scored 10 or more goals against Catonsville. Chris, describe the Cardinals' defense. Catonsville has a defense that plays very smart and in control. They slide very well and rarely allow any easy goals. Howard and Catonsville take the field next. Let's go to the Dragon Slayer. First quarter, the Cardinals extra man unit goes to work. Tanner Garache with a bullet. Great ball movement and a late slide lead to this wide open goal for Catonsville. After a Cardinals failed clear, here come the Dragons. Howard keeps the ball moving. Dan Kaplan finds the corner. Kaplan does a great job taking the extra step to increase his angle to score the goal. 11 minutes to play in the half, 3-2 Catonsville. Jackson Fleming fights his way to the cage and converts the point blank finish. Two unanswered goals from the Cardinals. Howard doubles Fleming behind the goal. James Garrett sneaks in front. Cilio goes for the interception, allowing Garrett to score the empty netter. 5-3 Catonsville. Quick restart in the corner. James Garrett willing to pay the price. He takes it to the crease, stuffs it in, and draws the flag. Big time play from the freshman out of Frederick Douglass High School. One minute till the half, Tom Klotz connects with Jack Farrell. He takes it into the heart of Catonsville's defense. Steps back, overhand rip, he scores! Farrell cuts the lead to two. Anthony Pagnotta won the ensuing faceoff, giving Howard one last first half possession. Klotz makes the most of it, a well-placed bouncer from the Wild Lake grad. We have a one goal game. Third quarter, Daquan Dixon goes to Fleming. He gets above goal line extended. The defense has to slide much earlier. You can't allow a player that much time that close to the goal. On the other end of the field, Ryan Hudson to Cody Martin. He fires a haymaker. We have a one goal game. Officials have called nine penalties on Howard, zero on Catonsville so far. Extra man opportunity for Catonsville. Cilio with the save. Man down defensive stand for the Dragons. Five minutes remaining in the third. Corbin Schmucker dodges, prepares to shoot. Justin Brown makes the save. Grant Evans wins the ground ball for Catonsville. Here come the Cardinals in transition. Christopher Levesque on the run. Cardinals attack the unsettled situation. Fleming sidearms it in. 19 in red makes it a two goal game. Here's Schmucker, top of the box. Gets some room. Schmucker from long range, he finds the back of the net. Jirache has it for Catonsville. Good defense from Jerron Brooks. Knocks him off balance. Jirache fires. Cilio with the save. He controls the rebound. After the defensive stand, Howard can tie it. Brock Went inside to Kaplan. Bounce pass up to Went. He keeps his head up. Goes to Martin behind the cage. Terrific feed to Kaplan, and Howard ties the game. Great ball movement by Howard. Gets the defense out of position and ball watching, leaving a man open to score. Fourth quarter, the suspensions have forced Howard's defenders to play nearly 120 minutes in a four-day period. Right now, they're playing their heart out. Prosper Odolatu fights for the ground ball. Tyler Workman backs him up and wins it for Howard. Dragons looking to capitalize. Klotz goes to Martin. Catonsville puts the pole on him. Martin to Ryan Kevin. Turned away by Brown. That's his 13th save. Howard gives Garache a cushion. He gives Catonsville the lead late in the fourth. The Dragons are in trouble. 2.50 to play. Matt Gray draws three defenders. Finds Kaplan behind the cage. He gives it up to Went. He walks down the short stick and scores. Howard ties the game. Clutch shot from the Dragons sophomore. Eight seconds left in regulation. Kaplan draws the pole. Switches the field. Here's Farrell for the win. Brown comes up with another save. We're going to overtime. First team to score wins. Catonsville won the faceoff. They're taking their time, looking to end it here. Garrett takes it behind the cage. Zach McElroy's there defensively for Howard. Travis Harrison beats him to his spot. Loose ball. Cilio vacates the crease and wins it for Howard. Aggressive play from the Dragons goalie. Gray passes to Hudson. He rushes the shot and the ball is out. 
The officials call a push on Catonsville, then a second flag on the Cardinals bench. Howard's up two men for 30 seconds. Gray goes to Klotz, overhand right, block. Kaplan with the rebound. Howard wins and the celebration is on. Matt Stovall, those are Dan Kaplan and Jerron Brooks. So what was the first thing popped in your head when that ball, you had a shot at it? Um, well, I mean, it wasn't, it's not like that was my first garbage goal. Um, so I knew that as soon as Tom was backing up to shoot, to turn and try and find it, and it just popped right to me, and I was able to grab it, and like I said, just put it right in. So, and, and like I said, you know, working for the best goal or getting lucky, either way works. Jerron, you and the whole team played tremendous defense the whole game. Um, How did you force that turnover late in over, or at the beginning of overtime? Uh, we knew we had their number throughout the game. Uh, most of their goals were scored on man down. So we knew we had that number. And we just all we had to do was put our defenders on them, and they would get the job done. And uh, we just knew we needed a stop so someone like Dan or Tom can get the game-winning goal. So um, how were you able to come up with so many man down defensive stands in this game? Uh, that's something we work on a lot in practice. Uh, lately, we've been doing that almost as much as we do six on six. And I think that really shows uh, within our rotation, picking up ground balls, clearing, and things like that. It's just the little things, playing it five, five more minutes in practice or talking about it five more minutes in the classroom is really, uh, I think that put us over the top today. Congratulations on the win, gentlemen. Thank you very much. For Dragon's Lair Update, I'm Matt Stovall. Welcome back to Dragon Sports Radio. Louis Garcia along with Mike Gambino, and we're joined today by Coach Eric Faust of the HCC men's lacrosse team. Uh, welcome, Coach. Thanks for having me again. Coming, coming out of the Har Harford game, what did, what did you tell the players at the end of that game? I really I had to reiterate the rules as far as whether you can step onto the field or not. Um, but, again, I also I stressed to them that it was still, you know, in effect early in the season. You know, um, and we still had a lot of games to play, and that everyone makes the playoffs, and um, that you know we're going to have to battle and we're going to have to fight until we get our our full squad back and our full staff back. And you know, there really wasn't any kind of magic word or magic. You know, there wasn't anything I could really do other than put them in positions on the field where they could be successful. Um, you know, and and. You know, going into Essex, when we're down 14 guys and, and three coaches, and Essex being the number two team in the country, um, we went up in that game 2-0 pretty quickly. And, uh, you know, I was happy that that happened, but at the same time, I knew that it would be next to impossible to sustain that with the numbers that we had. So... You know, I was in the same. I was in the position as well as the guys. I'd never been in that position before as a coach, and most likely none of the players had been in the same, a similar position. So it was kind of a learning experience for all of us. Um, I think my main, my main theme, you know, as far as when I was, you know, addressing the players and the team and the staff was just to stay positive, you know, and be as positive as you can about the situation and only worry about things you can control. Through, through all this whole stretch, through the end of the Harford game, the suspensions and the and the losses after that, and then the three game win streak, what what is the what have the players t told you? What have they uh, said to you about everything going on? Well, I, I have regular communication with our captains, um, and I like to think that I can read read players my players really well. I can tell by their body language how they're feeling facial expressions, you know, nonverbal communication. And they have really um, responded well to positive reinforcement um, during this time. You know, I, I, I have a quick trigger to be loud, animated, and um, almost I've been called by former players almost bipolar where I'll be you know, very happy and, and excited about something, and then at, when somebody drops a bar or whatnot, I'll uh, change my tone significantly. But uh, my approach to it personally, and and management, managing the team has been tried to keep the same tone and, and and keep the same, you know, tone of my voice, tone of my with my attitude, um, and maintain a a positive outlook on everything. 
let's talk about Dan Kaplan for a second. Um, he's had three highlight goals in the last two games, two against Norwood, people draped all over his back. The one against Anne Arundel was just sick. Uh, talk about Dan and what he's brought to this team this year and his 40 goals. Yeah, Dan has 40 goals. Um, he's arguably the MVP of the team, him or, or Anthony Pagnata. Um, Dan is very calm. He's cool, collected. He's a tremendous you know, leader on the field and off. Uh, I coached Dan when he was a sophomore in high school, and, um, you know, he's the same kid, just, you know, taller and weighs more, you know, but, um, you know, he's a very, very, very uh, high IQ for the game, and so he makes very good decisions. He rarely has a turnover. He knows what he can do um, physically and, and, and from a, a skill standpoint, so he never tries to do too much. And, um, you know, with, with his, his style of play, just about everybody on the offensive end has adapted to it, and we've been successful with that. Um, the great thing about Dan is it's not just his offense. Um, you could look at the scores or stats from the last three games, and just about everyone's contributing. And I think Dan being, you know, out on the field all the time as an attackman um, has really allowed that to happen, making sure everyone gets involved. Um, and so uh, with that being said, he's a very valuable part of our team. Okay, Coach, one last question before we let you go. Um, how, you, you know, it's your first season. Uh, how do you think the team has evolved over the season? Well, I think, I mean, the season is a, is a bunch of, you know, peaks and valleys. You know, we... <clears throat> we had a, a tough couple games against Genesee and Nassau, you know, two top five teams in the country. And then we went out to Suffolk and played, and we won that game in overtime. And at that time, I think we were, even with those two losses, we were playing very well, but we hadn't really scratched the surface yet. And we hit, we played this, the Hartford game and struggled, you know, in, in, in all areas. And that really was a wake-up call, I think, for everybody, including the coaching staff. And, you know, being able to come out of those two games following the Hartford game with, you know, going one and one winning one and losing one, and then getting our entire team back was really, um, was really a strong or good thing for us to happen because to go through that phase or that, you could say, valley, in the middle of the season like that. And then to come out with three straight wins um, says a lot about our character and says a lot about, you know, who we are as a team and, and, and what's important to us. Good luck in the postseason, Coach. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming into the studio. Thanks a lot. It's time for track and field. My next guest brought home Howard Community College's first national championship. Co-head coach Eric Henlon joins me now. Welcome, Coach. Hey, thank you, Dan. I'm happy to be here with you. How excited are you about this year's team? I'm, I'm very much I'm excited about the team. I'm looking forward to a, a great championship. Um, we'll see what happens. Our boys are trying to rev up the boys, and I think they'll be okay. What impact has last year's national championship had on this year's team? Well, first thing, it has allowed us to get more quality athletes in the school. Um, it makes recruiting much better. Um, kids walk through the door. When we talk to students out, outside, they are pretty much um, receptive to our conversation and our attempt to get them at Howard come to college. So it has been um, a good reception from the students. Talk to us a little bit about your standout athletes this year. Uh, well, this year, for me, I have two good standout athletes working with, and it's a coincidence they both named Miles. Uh, we have Ian Miles and John T. Miles. Um, Ian is a, a 110 hurdler, and he will be doing the 110 hurdle along with the 200, um, the 4 by one and the long jump. And then we have John T. Miles, he will be doing the 200, the, and the 400 
both of these two athletes right now, they are number one rank in, in, in the Division Three Junior College. So what do you think will be the keys to winning a back-to-back -back national title for our men? Well, the key will be on our student athlete. Honestly, they, they have, if they make that commitment and they have that desire and that burning desire really to, to, to repeat the championship, I don't see any reason why they can't do it. But he's going to be on them. They, they got to really want to defend this. But um, we are working towards it. And um, we, we, we have not revved them up yet. Because um, I don't, I'm a coach who I, I like to take it step at a time. I don't want to rev them up too early. And then they start to lose that interest. So we rev them up when it's important. Well, I wish you a lot of luck for the rest of the season. Coach, I thank you very much for having me here, and um, we are going to do the best we can to make Howard come to college proud. Thank you. You're welcome. Women's Lacrosse closes the show with a match against Hartford. Mark Zinno anchors our coverage. Thanks, Diane. Lacrosse analyst Chris Carey back for more Region 20 lacrosse action. Howard enters the game with a 3-3 three and three record. Coach Carey's Dragons made history in April, beating defending champion Anne Arundel for the first time. The Dragons are averaging 16 goals per game in their last four matches. Chris, what does Howard like to do on offense? Howard likes to capitalize on the fast breaks. Their potent offense can challenge 1v1 and has players with great shots. Once settled, however, Coach Carey has been working hard to teach her offense how to take care of the ball and not rush their shots. Hartford enters the game ranked fourth in the nation. The Fighting Owls are 6-4, and four, and they made it to Nationals last year. Chris, how does Howard shut them down? Howard can shut them down by keeping possession of the ball. The longer Howard has the ball, the better chance they have of limiting Hartford's equally high-powered offense. Howard and Hartford square off next. Let's go to the Dragon's Lair. First half, Jamie Twardowitz scans the field, connects with Michelle Sparling, and she puts it away. Howard opens the game with three quick goals. Dragons are getting it done on both ends of the field. Katia Randazzo times her check perfectly to disrupt the shot. Excellent defense from the freshman out of Ellicott City. Here's Christy Barringham on the clear. Nice pass catches Lisa Bianchini in stride. She turns it upfield, finds Sparling all alone in transition. Sparling draws two defenders, freeing up Charlotte Wilkinson on the right side. Great transition and unselfish ball movement create the goal. Erica Heafy gives it to Sparling. The team clears out to provide the 1v1 opportunity and a great finish with her left. Sparling introduces herself with two goals in the first eight minutes, a five-zip lead for Howard. Wilkinson gives it back to Sparling. She looks to take it inside, retreats, goes behind the cage to Tortowitz. She feeds it to Wilkinson. Terrific execution from Coach Carrier's Dragons. A good look for the inside player. Howard is outclassing Harford and the frustration is building. Ugly foul from the Harford defender. The officials give her a yellow card. Randazzo feeds it inside to Katie Brooks, and she makes him pay. 7-0 Dragons. Sparling scans the field, gets above goal line extended, smokes a defender, and comes up with a first-half hat trick. Harford looks to generate some offense. Loose ball in front. Randazzo wins the ground ball. Number six in blue with the foul. Harford has 20 fouls in the first 30 minutes. Here's Lisa Don. She dodges, goes right. Gets her hands free and pulls the trigger. Free position for Howard. Charlotte Wilkinson sticks it past the keeper. 10-4 Dragons. Failed clear for Harford. Bianchini gets it back for Howard. Passes ahead to Heafy. She fakes it. Goes right. Harford with another ugly foul. These hits to the head are cause for concern. Ensuing free position. Heafy extends the lead to seven goals. Tremendous effort from the Centennial High School grad. Second half, Harford looking to clear it. Wilkinson all over Brittany Bowman. Wilkinson knocks it loose, wins the ground ball. Overhand left, and she finds the back of the net. A great ride creates a turnover and a goal for the Lady Dragons. 13-5 Howard. Twarteritz gets above goal line extended. Lowers her shoulder. Another ugly foul from Harford. Ensuing free position. Twarteritz gets to the crease, absorbs the contact, and beats the keeper low. Harford lands another stick to the head in the process. 
12 minutes, five goal lead for the Dragons. Alex Moser goes to Erica Hefe. She fakes right, blows by her defender. Hefe's on the run and she buries it high. Harford's overly aggressive play leads to numerous yellow cards, resulting in man-up situations for the Dragons. Final seconds, Hefe catches Wilkinson in transition. She goes to Sparling. Howard wins! Great ball movement and unselfish play was key to the Dragons' victory. Let's send it down to Matt Stovall. Charlotte, this was a great team win. What are your thoughts after this game here? Um, I think we played hard. I mean, we under pressure, we kind of tend to throw the ball away, but we definitely stay together as a team. That's our thing. <laughs> but um, I think we overall played really well, better than the last game we played against them, I think. Charlotte, you seem to be dominating draws this year. What's your? Tell us a little about your technique. <laughs> I mean, I don't really know. I guess I've just done them for a while, so I just got the hang of it. And you I draw to yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, I guess it's kind of like on your legs and your wrist. So, I mean, if you have good reaction, it's just a lot of coaching and practice. Erica, what do you feel was the deciding factor in this game? How did you get the win? Um, I feel like we took uh, better care of the ball than they did. Um, we did awesome on defense. We doubled, e like, even when we w weren't man down. And um, our transitions were pretty, pretty good, but we still have to work on um, not throwing the ball away. So, Erica, what do you think this team needs to do? Um, right now you have a very good record. What's it going to take to get to nationals? Um, I think we just have to keep improving, um, go 100% every day at practice, um, get our injured players healthy again, <laughs> and, yeah, just keep improving. And we'll, we can win, yeah. Hard-fought win, ladies. For Dragons Lair Update, I'm Matt Stovall. Go to youtube.com slash Sports for the latest HCC highlights. Tune in Friday, June 13th for an all new Dragon's Lair update. Thanks for watching. And remember, go Dragons.